Okay, so we introduced the Laplace equation and we saw some properties of the Laplace equation which we could just you know look arrive at from the form of the equation itself. So in this lecture we will describe a powerful method called the method of separation of variables by which we can solve the Laplace equation. So we will you know, work this out in Cartesian coordinates. We are still going to work with uh, functions of two variables x and y. Okay, so yeah, so we have seen that the solution in 1D is of course you know, very straightforward. It's just a straight line, but even from the 1D solution, we could extract some useful properties, which we will see will extend to higher dimensions as well. So the simplest non-trivial problem is when we have two dimensions. In Cartesian coordinates, the 2D Laplace equation is simply given by dou squared, you know, u of x comma y divided by dou x squared plus dou squared u of x comma y divided by dou y squared equal to 0. And in order to solve this, we make this onsorts, which is called, you know, within this method called the separation of, of variables. So the onsorts is to, you know, look for a solution of where you are able to write the, you know, part which depends on x separately and the part which depends on y separately and take the product. So write down your solution as u of x comma y is equal to x of x times y of y and then look for solutions of this form. So when we are doing this it might appear that we are you know imposing a, 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 a restriction which is you know which is very artificial and we may you know be able to find a very special kind of solution alone. But it turns out that you know this separation of variables along with the principle of superposition allows us to in fact to stitch together many such solutions and in fact find the general solution of, of such a problem you know with pretty much any kind of boundary conditions it, it turns out it is possible at least for the kind of boundary conditions which are you know physically motivated this is uh, this is not just a you know a, a method to give you some uh, you know, idiosyncratic type of solutions, but in fact it can give you the general solution. There is a prescription which we will describe. Now, uh, so what is the next step? So the next step is to take this uh, onsorts and plug it in into this PDE. So we have y times d squared. Now in, you don't have to write dou squared uh, here because now this is purely a function of x alone. x is a purely a function of x. y of y comes out so we have y times d squared x by dx squared and again likewise x comes out plus x times d squared y by dy squared equal to 0. So if we divide throughout by u of x comma y which is nothing but x times y so in the first equation y cancels out in the second one capital X cancels out so we are left with 1 over x d squared x by dx squared plus 1 over y d squared y by d, uh, dy squared equal to 0. So rewriting this as 1 over x times d squared x by dx squared is equal to minus 1 over y d squared y by dy squared is very instructive. So this is where this is like the core of the method of separation of variables argument. So the idea is that now we have managed to write this equation you know where there is only stuff which depends on x on the left hand side and there is only stuff which depends on y on the right hand side. So the only way that you can have some scenario where f of x is equal to g of y where f and uh, g are some functions and you know the variables involved are x and y so you are you have the freedom to change x you can x can take all real values y can take all real values and if two functions have to be equal the only way this can happen is if both of these functions are equal to a constant and both of these are equal to the same constant right so that's the core of the argument involving uh, you know this this method. So now this constant, how we choose this constant gives us you know different kinds of solutions. Right? So that's where the boundary conditions will come in. But now at this general level of discussion, we can break this down into three different kinds of solutions. So we have you know we equate this to some constant we call k. Now depending upon what this k value is there are three different types. So if we take k to be minus 
p squared where p is p is real right so it, it's a it's a negative real number if k is a negative real number then we get you know the, the differential equations involved are are these two these are both ordinary differential equations which we are familiar with we know how to solve these kinds of uh, ordinary differential equations right so this is one reason why we have need a need to have a thorough understanding of ordinary differential equations of you know properties of fourier analysis and so on before we embark on our study of pdes so d squared capital x by dx squared is equal to minus p squared x is one and the other one is d squared y by dy squared is equal to p squared y if we solve these so the first of these will give us sines and cosines sine of px and cosine of px are both solutions of this right so i mean this is a an ordinary differential equation of order 2 so indeed we expect uh, two independent solutions right so we can write these two independent solutions as sine of px and cosine of px we could also have written it as in terms of e to the i px and e to the minus i px it does not matter so let's uh, write it as sine and cosine it's convenient uh, and on the other hand this differential equations solutions independent solutions are e to the py and e to the minus py so you get exponentials for you know in y uh, so the other case is when k equal to 0 if k equal to 0 that's kind of a sort of a you know an in between case and where the differential equations are in are trivial in some sense right so this is d squared x y dx squared equal to 0 d squared y by d y squared equal to 0 so it's really basically a you know 1d problem of the kind which we already described when we looked at the 1d uh, um, um, 1d version of laplace equation so of course the answer is simply two straight lines you can write them write it as ax plus b and cy plus d and so the solution would be just simply a product of these two linear solutions right so this is uh, you know uh, of a very trivial kind and perhaps it, it finds application in like very very special circumstances now the other case is like a mirror image of the first case right suppose we have k equal to plus p squared where p is real then you get d squared x by dx squared equal to p squared x but d squared y by dy squared becomes minus p squared y so in, in some sense this is like reversing the roles that are played by x and y right so so now what happens is you get exponentials for for x and sines and cosines for y so capital x is e to the px or e to the minus px and y the solutions are sine of py and cosine of py right so the thing is that in general any linear combination of all these four possibilities so both in case 3 and case 2 i mean the solution in general would be of course e to the px times sin py plus some constant times this plus some other constant times e to the px times cosine of py plus some other constant times e to the minus px times sine of py plus some other constant times e to the minus p px cos py so all four combinations are are you know acceptable they're all legitimate solutions and in fact the value of p itself can be changed right so depending upon the boundary conditions so we will we will see that imposing you know boundary conditions we will be able to restrict the value that p takes you know and in some cases case one is more more appropriate if these are all you know restrictions which come about from the boundary conditions right we will you know discuss some standard kinds of boundary conditions where you know which are of a great importance in in you know in real world examples and um, so there we will see that depending upon the kind of uh, geometry that you have the kind of uh, you know behavior you want for large x or small x or certain values of x or in certain values of y you know so one or the other kind is more appropriate and then also we'll have to restrict the values that p takes and then even after restriction you may still have an infinite number of possibilities for p and so we'll have to combine coefficients combine all these solutions for different values of p and come up with some you know an arbitrary superposition of all of these is going to be of course a solution but then if all the boundary conditions must be satisfied exactly then we will see that all these coefficients also get fixed in in a very precise manner right so that's coming up in the 
next lecture. So, but that is all for this lecture. Thank you.